worship the Lord this morning in song and praise. And we can all stand in the house of God this morning. We're going to celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ and his power. And it's such a privilege to be able to come into the house of God and praise the Lord because he's amazing, isn't he? Amen. An amazing God. We love him. And we are going to see revival 2022. Hallelujah. There's revival and it's spreading like a wildfire in my heart. From Sunday morning, hallelujah, and it's lasting all week long. Can you hear it? The rhythm of the gospel song. Oh, you can choose it, you can lose it. There ain't nothing, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. I got an old church choir singing in my soul. I got a sweet salvation, it is beautiful. I got a heart overflowing because I've been. Hallelujah In 
the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah.
The same power that rose Jesus from the grave. The same power that commands the dead to live lives in us. Lives in us. The same power that moves mountains when he speaks. The same. Oh, yeah. 
walls down this morning. Everything that we brought in here with us, all the sickness that we brought in here, all fear, break it down, Lord Jesus. Break it down with your spirit. If you brought addiction in here this morning with you, the Holy Spirit is going to break that down. If you brought pain in here, emotional or physical, the Holy Spirit's going to break that down. Just have faith. Give it to the Lord. Sing with me this morning. Let go of it all. Leave it at the altar. And sing with me this morning with all your hearts, everything that's in you. Spirit, break out. Spirit, break out. Break our walls down. Spirit, break out. Heaven, come down. Let's praise the Lord this morning. Let's give Him a round of applause. Let's cry out to the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Let's raise the hallelujah in this place, right? No rocks crying out this morning, right? Just us, right? Amen. 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 The Spirit breaking out this morning. Feel the presence of the Lord. This Holy Spirit is here mightily. Wow. We praise the Lord. Those watching praise the Lord. His presence is swollen. Powerfully in our midst this morning. Amen. How many people feel the presence of God here today? Amen. A round of applause and praise Him. Because in the latter days, we know the Holy Spirit's going to break out Amen. upon all flesh, according to the book of Acts and Joel, like the prophecy in the latter days. So we're in the latter days. Spirit is about ready to break out. And we're looking forward to His goodness and what He's going to do. It's exciting. He could come at any moment. So let's be ready for his coming. Because he's coming back. Amen. For his church. Praise God. Y'all may be seated. Amen. The spirit is breaking out. This 
spirit is moving here powerfully. I just want to praise the Lord. God is good. How good is God? Uh, amazing. Uh, I like that. That's a good answer. I heard some people, how good is God? All the time. <laughs> how good is God? All the time. Amazing all the time. I like that. Amen. That's a good one. He's amazing all the time. So uh, we're not going to give any real announcements this morning. Just a couple of things. If you have Facebook, if you've seen me, we're, we're fa Facebook Live. We actually literally had a mistake on our Facebook page. There was a broken link somehow to our website. I clicked on it. The link wouldn't go to our Facebook live stream. It says we live stream. When you click it, it says broken link. So it, it wasn't working. So we fixed it. And uh, but we have a business page. It's Abundant Grace Church. If you if you have if you have Facebook, like that page. It'll give you a notification. Abundant Grace Church. We have that up now. So we're going to be. That's where we're doing live stream on the business page. Abundant Grace Church. So it's pretty easy. Just type in our church name on Facebook. You'll see. You see me up there somewhere. You'll see our church. You just hit like, and then, you know, you'll uh, be able to get notifications of all our live streams. So we're live streaming on the business page, and that's how we'll do it. And then uh, YouTube will follow after, and we'll be able to put it on there. So just a couple other things. If you, uh, if you have not been able to give to our church, you can give online, AbundantGraceNH.com. You go on our website, AbundantGraceNH.com, and... You can support online, and we appreciate all the donations online. They've been a really big help, so we just praise God for your support online. And um, also, if you're here, you can obviously give. We don't pass out a, a box or a plate or anything like that. The box is there, and all you have to do is uh, give as the Lord is leading, and he will bless you mightily. So praise the Lord for all of you today. We're going to have a, uh, a coffee house coming up in March. We're looking forward to it. It's the last Friday of the month of March, the last Friday in March. It's at 7 o'clock, and we're going to have a lot of open mic. It's going to be a great time. So if you have talents or if you just like to enjoy the festivities, we encourage you to come out. So it's going to be a good time. If you have cell phones, if you could, just put those on vibrate or quiet or whatever, if you want to use it for the word, that's fine, as long as it doesn't go off and distract, it is cold outside, those who are watching in the south, it may not be as cold as where we are up here, but <laughs> it's cold here, and, uh, but we're praising God, it's getting warm in the house of God, because the Holy Spirit is here today, and uh, for those who watch the Patriots game, I, I feel bad for you, but anyway, <laughs> that was a painful watch for those I don't know. Uh, I, I mean, I think I could have played defense for him last night, and I would have fit right in with the defensive group that was out there last night. But anyway, they didn't know how to stop anything, so you can't win if you can't stop anything. So, but uh, we'll see what happens as they journey on. But God bless you guys, and uh, we're going to be getting into part four of our series, and we're going to get into the Word, and uh, just praise God for everyone who's here in the house of God. It's great to see your wonderful, smiling faces as we get into the Word of God today. Hope this is applicable to us as we read Scripture. We need Jesus now, and we really need Him, big time, because we're coming to the precipice of some crazy things that are going to fulfill prophecy. So we're going to get into the Bible, and we're going to get into the book of Luke today. So... Um, Without further ado, we're going to get into the Word, and we'll start with prayer, and we'll just pray that the Lord blesses this message. And again, God bless you all for being here. For those who are out and watching online, we miss you, we pray for you. For those who just watch online, we love you too, and God bless. So we can start in prayer. Father God, we praise you today. Thank you for the powerful worship with song and, and music. And the Lord, it's just amazing how you show up every time. Without fail, Lord, I just pray that your spirit would just touch our hearts. And Lord, we love you more than life itself, Lord. But your love for us is even greater than ours is. You, we love you because you first loved us. Thank you for choosing us and loving us and chasing us down. 
And Lord, your love is amazing. It's beyond comprehension. And Lord, help us to love one another, faults and all, because we're supposed to love our neighbor as ourselves. And I pray we can do that in 2022. In Jesus' name, amen. Before I start, I'm just going to transition <coughs> over on my mic. Focus is so important. And if we have broken focus, that's going to be the enemy's victory over us. So we have to be focused on the Lord. We have to get set on him. It says our David says, my mind is fixed on the Lord. You can read through the book of Psalm. He was meditating and fixed on him. So we must be fixed on the Lord. And our attention to him must be strong. Because we're in a time right now that's very perilous. The Bible says in the latter days, perilous times shall come. How many people believe we're in some precarious times? Anyway, perilous times? Yes. Precarious times? Absolutely. And we're seeing things happening, and it's escalating over and over and over again. Like I said, we're, it's a, we see the spiritual decay. We're in a spiritual precipitous decline. We know that things aren't like it used to be, what it used to be years ago. So I believe we're in some latter days. We're seeing prophecies being fulfilled all the time. And we're getting closer. So I believe that the, there's a sifting process going on right now. I believe the goat and the sheep are being sifted right now. It's, it's like the wheat from the chaff. And so... Is there something going on with this? Testing one, two, is it my mic? Hold on a minute. One, two. So I believe we're in a this precipitous decline, but I believe that, you know, we're in the latter days, and we've got to keep our eyes on the Lord. And that's the title of today's message, is Watching for Christ's Coming. How many people are watching for Christ's coming? You know the scriptures say there's a crown in the book of Timothy for those who wait for his coming? Those who look for his coming, that's a reward that you get in heaven in the book of Timothy, if you look for his coming. How many people are looking for his coming today? Amen. Do you know why people don't look for his coming? Do you know why people want it to be delayed? Do you know why people don't long for his coming? Because they're so consumed in the world that they love the world more than Jesus. And so they love the world more, so they don't want Jesus to come back. They don't want to long for him. They don't want to be with him. They say, oh, can we wait? You know, I don't want him to come because it's because they don't have Jesus first. If, if you wanted Jesus first over everything else, you'd long for him to come back. If he was first, right? If someone's first in your life, you're going to want to be with them more than anything else. Am I right? And if we long for Jesus' return, that's a reward. That shows you where your heart is, too. We should be longing for his coming, amen? And a lot of people don't. They say, oh, no, I hope he doesn't come. I've got so much to do. And you know, we have a lot to do on the earth. But you know what? His coming is the best. And returning with Jesus Christ, that's our permanent home. And so we should be longing for the coming of Jesus Christ. And we should be watching for Christ's coming. That's the title of the message. And he's coming back, and it's going to come as a twinkling of an eye. It's going to come quick. When it does happen, it's going to happen. I believe it's going to happen in this generation. I do believe in a rapture. He said, you believe in a rapture? I do believe in a rapture, by the way. Hello? How many people believe in the rapture of the church? I do, because in, if you believe in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17, it says we will be caught up in the clouds. Now, when is that going to happen? The dead Christ shall rise, and we will be caught up in the clouds, right? Amen? You believe that? Do you believe in the rapture? He's coming back to take us? A lot of people, I hope all people believe in it because it's coming. It's a prophecy. That means Jesus is going to come back and take his people from the earth at some point. Now, I don't get into the, I don't want to get into the argument of pre-trib, mid-tribs, and all this post-trib stuff and whenever he's coming back. Because I like Matthew 24 and 36. 
I love that scripture. Now that day and hour, no man knoweth, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. A lot of people think they have the answer, scholars, and you know, I may have my opinion, other scholars have their opinions, I think it's pre tribulation I don't care about any of that. What I care about is that we need to be ready for his coming, because he's coming back. We don't know exactly when he's coming back, so we need to look up and watch for his coming. Amen? Can someone say amen? Amen. He's coming for you. He's coming for you. He's coming for his bride. And it's going to happen fast. So I'm going to go right into the book of Luke chapter 21. And I'm going to read verse 8. And I'm going to continue reading some scripture. <coughs> prophecy in the Bible. Luke 21. This is end time prophecy. This is when Jesus comes back for his church. He's coming back for you. Are you ready? This is scripture. We're supposed to talk about prophecy too. Amen. So this is where our focus lies, is it should be on what's going on. We should know what's going on in our society. So I'm going to go into Luke chapter 21 and verse 8. He said, and he said, take heed that ye be not deceived. This is Jesus. Take heed. That means listen, pay attention. Listen to what I'm saying. Don't be deceived. It says, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and the time draweth near. Go ye not therefore after them. Many are going to come as false prophets, imposters of Jesus Christ, acting like they're godly, acting like they're righteous, acting like they're preaching the word. False prophets. So when we're watching for Christ's return, you're going to see apostasy. You're going to see a lukewarm church. You're going to see churches not preaching the whole truth anymore. You're going to see only a remnant of people doing that. You're not going to see people standing on the Bible anymore because they're false prophets. They're false Christ. They're acting, you know, like they're... They're preaching truth when they're really deceiving is what's going on. So, and what does it say in verse, it says, don't go after them, verse 8. Now, verse 9 says, but when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. Are you hearing of wars and commotions right now? Russia has already gone into some of the former uh, U.S. Uh, SR, you know, the, in the Soviet Union, they, they, they've gone into some of these countries. They're about ready to invade Ukraine. That's where their, their army base is going. They're looking to go in there. Uh, and they've gone to other parts of that region. They're going to try to take over because they really want to go down from the north to the south where Israel is and get other countries with them because there's going to be a war going on soon enough. But Russia is flexing their muscles more and more, and they're beginning to get their tanks, so there's wars and rumors of wars there. We see what's going on in, in China. China is wanting to take over Taiwan. They want to go in. They're already planning on an invasion there. Wars, rumors of wars. We've heard all about this. North Korea is now firing their missiles again. Rocket Man is firing them up. There he goes. Rockets are flying in the air, right? So there's some threats. The Middle East, we know there's a lot of terrorism. Iran is involved in so much. Hezbollah, and if you look at Lebanon, they're trying to do elections over there. Hezbollah is trying to take over. There's a lot of corruption. The terrorist uh, organization within that country is trying to take over Lebanon, which is right near Israel. You can see what's happening. Everything's aligning. Wars, rumors of wars. We know that what's going on all across the globe. It's getting darker and darker. Can someone say amen? Am I preaching truly or what? Okay. There are a few amens over there, but this is the truth. And then it says, but it says, the end is not by and by. Then verse 10 says, then said he unto them, nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. We see what's going on. Then verse 11. It says, a great earthquake shall be in divers places. And famines and pestilences and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. Earthquakes in diverse places. You know, there's been earthquakes in Japan. There's been tsunamis, all kinds of earthquakes. Pakistan, India. We know Indonesia's had some great earthquakes. We've seen some in California. We've seen some in, even in the African region. We've seen so many earthquakes. They said in the last decade, there's been more earthquakes in the last decade then all of the years combined, they take it like a century back, and the earthquakes have escalated to higher levels like they've never seen before. So we see that going on. And it's famines. What is famines? Famines, we know in Africa and different areas, there's locusts. They've been eating all of the 
the food and all the crops and in the, the vegetation. There, it's been happening. Locusts everywhere. This is prophesied in the Bible. And they've been eating up so much of the land that they can't get rid of it all because it's so bad. There's going to be famines. You know what famines is? Food shortage caused by drought. And so there is droughts, but we see shortages too. Inflation's going up, right? It says a day's wage for a, for a loaf of bread, right? Wheat for a loaf of bread. This is prophesied in the book of Revelation that it, prices are getting more expensive, right? Yep. You see a grocery bill? Anybody notice anything going on? Yep. You ever notice how expensive it is now? I, I went for blueberries. I was four forty nine. dollars I'm paying, I've seen six sixty nine. dollars I'm like, how's this two twenty? dollars How's this all going up? I'm looking here. I said, I ain't buying that. I mean... I'm finding myself not buying things that I was buying now, or I'm finding myself not finding what was there because it's empty. Am I right with some of this? Are you guys noticing the same thing I'm yeah. noticing here? Yeah. Food shortages, toilet paper shortages, <laughs> paper towel shortages. I still don't understand why they're going after that, but I just don't understand it, but I mean, it's okay. If you, you gotta go, you gotta go, right? I mean, maybe people have IBS or something, we don't know. But anyway, <laughs> there's something going on. I need more toilet paper, but <laughs> sorry. But it, it, we see what's going on, right? And it, it's, it says this is all going to happen. I, have, have I missed anything yet? Are we there so far? Is all this stuff happening today? Okay, then what else does it say? And famines, right? There's famines all across the globe, which I just talked about food shortages, and I just covered it, and pestilences. That's disease and plagues. COVID-19. This is It was a man-made, I believe, a man-made pestilence. doesn't say whether it's man-made or not. It just says pestilences. This is prophecy being fulfilled. Having this COVID here, COVID-19, right? It was a Delta variant, then an Omicron, then a Delta-cron, then a cron a cron and a, <laughs> a variant on top of it, and a... I've heard every kind of variant is going to be a variant for the rest of our lives. We're going to have variants everywhere for the rest of our lives. Now, anyone who's had COVID, I'm not trying to say there's no COVID. I never would say that there's no there, there is a thing, COVID. People have been sick by it. And for those who have struggled from it, I pray for speedy recovery. But God's going to protect you from the plagues. God's going to pull you through, and he's going to heal you. He's going to deliver you. He's a good God, isn't he? And he protects his own. He says he delivers us from the noisome pestilence. If you're worried about COVID-19, read Psalm 91. God will protect you. Amen? And plus, look at the government's doing. They're trying to enforce mandates all across the world. I mean, we got kind of good news in a way at the Supreme Court. I mean, better news than bad news, but it sh they shouldn't allow uh, mandates for medical workers. So now they're going to have uh, shortages in the medical field because, you know, people aren't going to want to get the vaccine and they're going to say, I'm not going to work as a nurse or I'm not going to work as in this medical field. So we're going to have some issues there because they're forcing mandates still. There should be no mandates because you know what they're trying to do? Program the people. They're forcing it all across the globe. You can't go anywhere without a mandate. You know, so this is just programming. A lot of people say, you took the vaccine. That's the mark of the beast. And this and that. You know, conspiracy theorists. <laughs> I don't believe that it's the mark of the beast at all. I just think it's, it, I don't trust it. You think I trust anything the government's pushing? Biden says, take it, I won't. I think Biden says I do the opposite. <laughs> just do the opposite of what he says and you do the right thing. You'll be all set. And whatever he says, go and do the opposite, you're good, right? Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm not political, but I'm just saying this guy is screaming at the unvaxxed every minute, telling us what we need to be doing. We don't need to be t anyone to tell us what to do with our bodies and our medical, you know, condition. That's between us and God and our doctor. That's it. Yeah. If you feel led to do it, that's up to you. But we shouldn't be forced into doing these things. Amen? But they're forcing it because they're trying to continue to mandate. They want to see how far they can go until they can get into what? The mark of the beast eventually. You know, the, the dollar keeps going up. Inflation, what happens when the dollar keeps getting weak? Let's just get rid of the dollar altogether. We'll go to you know, Bitcoin or whatever these currencies are today. We'll just go into one world currency eventually, you know, and then we'll go to the mark of the beast eventually. And then, you know what? Hey, if you, if you don't take this mark, you're going to get scanned. You know, they're doing it in some countries already. They're starting to have people scan. They're paying. I don't know exactly what countries they are, but I've heard stories about where they're starting to put chips in and people are buying. They're already starting it. A little bit here, a little bit there. Before long, 
You're going to put the chip in the right hand. It says, in the right hand of the forehead. Revelation chapter 13, verse 16, 17 talks about the mark of the beast. In the right hand of the forehead. So this pestle and stuff is all planned. It's all planned because they want to get the, the beast in system in here. The Antichrist is going to come eventually. Amen? I believe we're in birth pains. How many people believe we're in birth pains right now? We're in the beginning of sorrows. It's coming, but we got Jesus on our side. We got Jesus watching over us. He said, look, these things are happening. Watch for Christ's coming. How do you know the signs? How do you know the times? Jesus says right here in his word what's going on. And it was seeing it today. So that's why we need to be on fire for God. We can't be caught up in the world because when Jesus comes back, we don't want to be in the world. We want to be with him. For those who could get left behind, they could because they weren't serving the Lord or whatever. And, um, or if you are saved and you're not serving the Lord, that would not be a good uh, union with Christ when he comes back. So we need to be on fire. It says be ready for his coming because he comes as a thief in the night. Amen? He's coming quick. He's coming fast. He's coming for you. He loves you. He's got a plan. Now look what it says, verse 12. It says, but before all these things, they shall lay their hands on you and shall persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. And it shall turn to you for a testimony. Persecution's coming. The church is going to get persecuted. Shut the church down. Shut the church down. The persecution is already starting small, but it's going to get worse and worse before you know it. Because they're going to, everything they stand for, the church, is the opposite, you know? And so they're going to persecute us as believers because we are godly. So you're going to deal with some persecution as it gets worse. So persecution is part of it, Christian persecution. We see it more in the Middle East, right? We see it in China. We see it in Asian countries. It's coming to a, a, a place near you eventually. The persecution is coming to the United States of America. It will come. More and more, Christians are going to get persecuted. Notice how other religions don't get persecuted, but if you have faith in God and Jesus, you get persecuted. Why? Because the devil hates Jesus Christ. They don't curse anybody's name but Jesus, because the only one that the devil hates is Jesus, because Jesus is the Lord. Where every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess, he's Lord, he's master, he's king, and the devil's defeated 2,000 years ago on that cross, and he's given us eternal life, and we need to be ready because he's coming for a bride. And you are the bride. And we are going to have a great union with our Lord Jesus Christ. And we are going to celebrate for all eternity. And whatever you have here cannot even begin to compare what your future is going to be. Do you know what kind of future you got? You say, I'm old. I got no future ahead. No. Whatever time you have here, be busy about his business because God wants to use you. But it doesn't matter. Your, your future is going to be forever. Your future hasn't yet begun until you enter with him. Then you've got a future that's eternal, that never ends. Ever and ever and ever, forever and ever and ever, you've got it. And you don't have to worry about aging. You don't have to worry about anything. I'm getting old or I'm doing it. No, you aren't. You're, you're going to be forever looking amazing. You're going to be at the prime age. You're going to look fabulous. You're going to be blessed. God's got a beautiful plan for you. But enjoy while you're here. Do your work. Do the things you need to do. L enjoy life. Work. And do the things you need to do to prepare and have fun. But make sure where your priorities are. First, watch for him. Love him more than anything else. Amen? That's all I'm saying. God wants to bless you while you're here, too. Let me continue. What does it say? Verse 14, it says, Settle it therefore in your hearts not to meditate before what he shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all the adversaries shall not be able to, to gainsay nor resist. Gainsay means to deny or contradict. He'll give you all the words that they can't contradict. He'll be more wiser than the greatest lawyers out there. So when they persecute you, don't meditate on what to say. Just let God give you wisdom. If they persecute you at your job or if they persecute you wherever you are, let the Lord give you wisdom when you're dealing with persecution. He will give you the words. Look at verse 16. And ye shall be betrayed by both, both by parents and brethren and kinfolks, which is kinfolks means relatives, and friends, and some of you, they shall cause to be put to death. So parents are going to go against children. Children are going to go against parents. Brothers against sisters. Kinfolk are going to go against each other. You're going to get persecuted by your own family. This is what happens in the latter days. 
People are going to turn against you. If you have family members turn against you, anybody deal with that at all? People, relatives, anybody in your home, anything like that, friends, betray you? This is what's happening in the latter days. This is what we're seeing, okay? And look at it, it says, And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. You know, you're going to get hated more and more when you're a Christian because when you're the light, you're going to be despised. This is part of the latter days, but that's okay. Jesus was hated. If you're hated, you're doing something right, amen? If they hate you, they said, hated me first before it hated you. It's okay because he says, in this world, you'll have tribulation. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And if he's overcome the world, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You're going to overcome it too. God is going to bless you because you stood fast. And he's going to do something great for you, even if you're hated. Look at the good news. Verse 18, and I want to get to something. It says, but there shall not a hair of your head perish. In the latter days, we're so worried about all these things, COVID-19, wars, rumors of wars, famines, all this stuff. That's going, you know what God promises? To protect us during the birth pains. To protect us during latter day times. To protect us during all of this. He says, not one hair on your head will be touched. Just like Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Not one hair on their head was singed. God protected them through the fire. We are walking in the fire right now of all of this evil that's going on in the earth that's continuing to increase more and more. But you know what? God is going to protect you. God is going to surround you. He's going to keep the plague away. He's going to continue to bless us and keep us safe during these times. Can we praise God for that? He's going to keep you safe. That's a promise from him. He says he'll keep you safe. Why are we worried about all these things? If we catch something, if we catch COVID, you know, you do what you got to do. But you know what? God's going to protect you. Don't be afraid to go somewhere. We, need, we can't live by fear. We've got to walk by faith. Choose faith over fear. Amen? He's going to protect you. Persecution, he'll protect you. He'll protect you at your job. He will, he will bless you. It says, I like that, not one hair on your head shall perish. And it says in verse 19, in your patience possess ye your souls. So be patient during this tribulation. Endure. So now I want to get to how to watch. I'm going to skip over to verse 28. You guys ready for some scripture here? So it talks about the abomination of desolation, right? In Daniel, that means the Antichrist is going to come on the scene during midway through the tribulation. And it's going to turn on Israel. And he's going to come in the temple and say, I am God. Worship me. Then the mark of the beast is going to come out at that time. He's going to say, take my image. Worship me. I am the Lord. He's going to mock God. The Antichrist, the false prophet, the beast. That's his image. The false prophet is the one that he likes prepares the way for the Antichrist. Notice how it's God the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Notice how he's an imposter. Comes in the Antichrist, the false prophet. The beast and the false prophet. See what he does? He's an imposter is what he is. But he's coming. And it continues to talk about him. You've got to flee to the mountains. But I want to go to verse 28 now. Verse 26 says, Men's hearts failing them for fear. Looking for those things that are coming on the earth. See, men's hearts are failing because of fear. The church is emptying because of fear. People are afraid to go out anywhere because of fear. People are afraid to serve God because of fear. They're letting fear take over their lives, and we can't do anything. God has not given us a spirit of fear. Our hearts, it says men's hearts fail. I mean, if you have anxiety all the time, it's not healthy for your heart. This is what it says. It talks about heart failure. That's heart failure right in Scripture, verse 26 of Luke 21. It says men's hearts fail for fear. So don't be fearful. Be peaceful. Be strong. God's got you. He's got your back. He's going to protect you. Now I want to get to verse 28. It says, And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draws nigh. It says, Look up. Watch for the coming of Christ. He's coming back. He's coming quick. He's coming. And it's going to be amazing. And you know what? It says his redemption's drawing nigh. That means you're going to be redeemed. That means all your sins are going to be washed permanently. You're going to be like Jesus because you're going to see him as he is. And you are going to be cleansed. You are going to have a new glorified body. You're going to have a mansion over the hilltop. You're going to be blessed. And you are going to be favored forever because God says you are redeemed. Redeemed by his blood. Amen. Redemption is drawing now. Redemption is drawing now. When you see these things, it means it's close. So you should be excited. You should be looking up. 
You should be looking at Jesus saying, you could come at any moment. You know, we're in the generation where he's coming back. He said, well, he hasn't come in 2,000 years. It says, when they least expect it, that's when he's going to come. People thought, oh, he can't come. He's coming. God's true to his word. The rapture is coming. He is coming quick. And you're going to be taken. How about if we get taken right now? I'm preaching. The mic drops. Everything drops. We just all come up. And I'm like heading up in the clouds, Georgia. And Brian, he's really going to get a reward. Brian. For his righteousness and all of us in Jesus' name, we're going to be blessed. I like getting Brian going. And we're going to be jumping up and dancing and praising and shouting. I don't know what I'm going to do. I like that song. I can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side, you know? Surrounded by your glory. <laughs> what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? In awe of you, be still. Will I stand in your presence or to my knees? Will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. Yeah. I can only imagine yeah. what it's going to be like. It's going to be, Paul said, far better. He actually was taken into the third heaven so in a vision, out of body, in body. He could not tell, but he saw it all. And he said, I can't even utter this. It's so amazing. I can't even speak on this. He, he couldn't wait. He goes, it's my time to depart. Can you get me out of here now? He was Marty. He goes, I can't wait to get there. Because God already took him there. He already saw it. got the vision. And he was Marty for the cause of Christ. But it says, look up. It's getting close. Verse 29. And it says, and he spake to them a parable. Behold the fig tree and all the trees. When they now shoot forth, ye shall see and know your own selves that summer is nigh, now nigh at hand. Right? You look outside right now. You see the trees. We don't see summer, do you? Is there any, you want to plant a garden right now out there? You want to go out and put some water, I mean, ice on there, I mean, water on there? <laughs> right? You're not going to get any, had, you know, anything, a harvest of any kind because it's too cold. But when you start seeing things bloom, when you start seeing the trees come and it's beautiful and it's blossoming, and you start seeing the fruit come on the apple tree, and you start seeing your garden come up and everything, just, what does that mean? The fig tree is starting to bring forth its fruit. You know what that means? When you see these things, it's just like the fig tree bringing forth fruit. When you see these things, we're about ready. We are about ready for the return. Are you ready? That's the question. God's saying it's time to get hot for me. He's saying it's time because I want to pour out my spirit one last time. Because the reason why he wants to fill us up is because he wants us to be a testimony and a light to this world. The reason why he's extending it as long as possible because he wants as many souls saved as possible. Because when we're taken, then it's who's going to preach the gospel? I mean, you'll have people running around, 144,000 and whatever. But you know what? We are the ones right now that need to preach the word. Because God is wanting souls saved. And he wants to use you. Okay, so it says... Verse 30 says, when they, shift, when they now shoot forth, ye see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand. Verse 31 says, so likewise ye, when ye see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. When you see these things, verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. I love that word gen generation. I mean, generation, it could be anywhere from the 30 years. I don't know. If anyone looked at... The, the time frame of a generation. Some say 30, some say 40. It depends. 30 to 40 year range. Now, it never says when the tribulation begins in the Bible. Any scholar, I don't care if you're pre-trib, I don't care if you're mid-trib, I don't care what your stand is on prophecy. There's nothing in scripture that says when this event happens, tribulation begins. There's no scripture that says when it begins. We know that, you know, seven years after the Antichrist signs a peace treaty, there's seven years left. We know that. But we don't know the beginning of it. And so, but I like how it says, it says this generation so not past, they'll all be fulfilled. So I can look at it as a generation would be the longest time frame of it. I don't know if we're in it yet or we're close to it yet. I don't know all this stuff. But one thing I do know, redemption's drawing nigh. It's quick. It's coming fast. Amen? Amen. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. There's going to be a new heaven and a new earth, and we are going to be with Jesus. It's going to be beautiful. And it says to take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your heart be overcharged with surfeiting. That's excesses of whatever it is you're surfeiting on. That's what it means, excessive whatever. 
you're overcharged in drunkenness and the cares of this life and so that that day come upon you unawares. It says don't get caught up in worldly excessive lifestyle, worldliness, debauchery, gluttony, um, you know, drunkenness, all of these things, lust, and you get consumed in all of that. And it says it's going to come on you unaware. You know what? And you're left behind in the tribulation. You say, really? What do you mean by that? I believe Christians are going to follow the Lord and look for his coming. They're going to, but people who think they're Christians and they're not going to be left behind. They're going to be caught up in all of this worldly stuff, thinking they're believers when they're not. And then they're going to say, well, no, I'm here. The rapture came and I'm stuck in this mess to the end. If you survive it, which is going to be very hard, the tribulation, to make it to the end. So that's why you need to be ready. Be on fire for God so when the rapture comes, you know you're here. You know you're his. You know that you're following him. And even if you're backslidden, he'll take you. But that would not be a good situation to be caught up in the clouds in that state. That's why we need to get hot for Jesus. He's coming back. He says, don't let it come unawares when you're not ready. It says, for as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. It's like a snare. Now, verse 36, we'll close with this. It says, watch ye therefore. What did I say? Watch for the coming of Christ. Did I say that? Watch for the coming of Christ? Watch for Christ's coming. That's the title of the message. It says, watch ye therefore. How many people are watching? They pray always. How many people are praying always? How many people are praying? Watch ye therefore and pray always. You praying? This is how you get ready for the coming of Christ. You watch, you pray, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that come to pass. Say, Lord, help me to be worthy enough to escape this stuff. Help me, the Lord, to be righteous and live an obedient life to escape these things that come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. We need to watch. We need to be ready for his coming because... We're going to stand before him someday. It says, watch ye therefore pray always. Isn't that something? That you may be accounted worthy. Because when he comes, it's coming like real fast. And we need to be worthy. Watch and pray. Because we could be overcharged with all kinds of surfeiting and excesses. And, and we get overcharged during that latter day. See, the devil wants you to turn to him during the time when Jesus is coming. Because it's going to get evil. The more evil it gets, it's harder to serve the Lord with his evil everywhere. People want to jump on the evil. But we should be jumping in the right way. Because you know what? The, the world is evil, but Jesus is good. He's got a plan for you, a purpose. He wants to, to get you ready so that you can witness to a dying and lost generation. He's coming, and he's, he's, he's really amazing. His spirit is going to be pouring out upon us. The bride is you. The bridegroom is Jesus. He's watching. He loves you beyond measure. Do you know how much Jesus loves you? Beyond measure. And he's saying he wants you to focus more on him. You know how you do that? He says, watch, pray. Say, Lord, I want my heart to be right with you. I want to get ready. Because you know why? Jesus wants you to be that light, the beacon. Because without that light, you know what? Souls can't get saved. You're the light. You're the servant. You're the ambassador. You're the one God is going to use. And he wants to bless you. And one other thing before I close, I want to say this. We need to get ready. We should see what's going on in the world. Watch, watch the news. Watch what's going on. Watch what the government's doing. It's okay to understand all of this stuff. I'm not telling you not to. Don't get consumed in it. But know it, because my people were destroyed for lack of knowledge. Amen? So we should know what's going on. And it says exactly that. It's right in the book of Luke. Everything that's happening today is what I just read in scriptures. So redemption's drawing near. Jesus coming back. We're going to see it, I believe, in this generation. They've been waiting for thousands of years, just like they waited so long. Th thousand years. They waited 700 years. But Jesus, the virgin birth, they waited. And finally, Mary had Jesus and Joseph was chosen. They waited 700 years when Isaiah made that prophecy. Now we've been waiting thousands of years for the rapture. I believe finally 
He is going to return. And I believe there's people here today that will not get physical death because the rapture is going to take us up and we're going to be with Jesus for all eternity and we are going to be blessed beyond measure. Can we praise the Lord because he's coming back to you and me. Hallelujah. Maranatha, praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, I'm telling you, some people say, I'm afraid of death. I don't know. Don't be afraid of death because even if you did die, you'll be right in his presence anyway. But I believe there's people here, I do believe, that will not have physical death if you're serving the Lord because I believe he's coming. And I believe maybe soon, I'm, I'm kind of older. I even believe it's so close that I even think older people are not going to see death. I, I think it's coming that quick. I think it's coming that quick. I mean, it is fast and furious. Who would have thought that this virus and all these things would happen so fast? If I would have told you in 2019 what was going to happen, the beginning of 2019, I said, this is going to happen in 2020, 2021, you'd be like, no. You're, you're nuts. It all happened. It comes quick. When it does happen, it happens fast. And you know what? That's why we need to be ready. We don't want that day to overtake us unawares because it came so quickly. We won't be, I already knew this was coming. Because we're close. Praise God. Keep your eye watching because redemption is drawing nigh. So I'm going to close this message. But before I do, I want to give you a chance to receive Christ as your Savior because if you're not saved and you get stuck, left behind, that's going to be the worst thing you could ever do. You need to be ready and saved because he's coming. Jesus is coming back. So if you get saved, you won't be left behind. You won't be left behind. I believe if you're really, truly a Christian, you won't be left behind. But if you're backslidden when he comes back, that's going to be shame, the Bible says in the book of John. 1 John 2.28 says if you're living a life of sin when he comes back as a believer you'll be ashamed that it's coming. And that's not good. We don't want that kind of thing to happen. But those who think they're saved and they're not, or if you're not saved, you could be stuck in that for misery, for seven years, tribulation. And that's going to be a horrible situation. So Jesus wants to save you. You say, how do I become a Christian? One, turn from your sins. Repent. The Bible says, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish, right? That means a turn from you in your heart. You're turning away. From ungodliness to accept Jesus. Say, I'm going to invite Jesus into my heart. John 1 12 says, As many as receive him, he's given you power to become the children of God. And then, if you call upon his name in faith, he will save you. So, let me pray this prayer. And if you can repeat this prayer, he will save your soul. So, would you repeat after me, Lord Jesus? I give you my life. I turn from my sins. Wash me in your blood. Come into my heart. Save my soul. I receive your spirit. Wash me in your blood. I am your child. I'm putting you first. I'm sold out for you. Use me. Mold me. Make me. Jesus' name. Amen. That was a powerful prayer. And believe me, if you pray, the devil isn't going to be too happy about that because he lost another one. And you will be blessed for all eternity. God bless you.